With paired data, the x values and y values are related. In this particular example, the x and the y values form a linear relationship, as can be seen in this graph. That is, the data values, when plotted on an x-y coordinate plane, form a line that can be seen here, an imaginary line. And so the value as the time increases on the x-axis, the distance increases on the y-axis. I'll go ahead and turn off the legend here and go ahead and set that to be the time on the x-axis, and this is the distance. This is the example first uh, used in section 4.1. Uh, now, from Google Sheets app, as noted in section 4.1 video, the trend line uh, cannot be displayed. But if you happen to have access to a laptop or a desktop, one can get access to the uh, uh, trend line. It's a customization feature under series. And one can display the trend line on the graph. That line that you see that just appeared was done from the desktop version, not from the app. From the app, we cannot add that line. But that's the imaginary line I've been talking about. And that line tells you that if you have values along uh, uh, of x values, you can predict the y value. That is, if you know a time, you can predict what the distance will be. And if you know the distance, you can predict what the time is likely to be. So I've used the desktop version to add a grid to this. And one can see uh, that if one picked a time between 1 and 2 seconds, say about 1.5, one would come out somewhere uh, up around uh, some seven and a half or so um, feet, the distances in feet. So that's the use of these things. They allow us to make predictions. They allow us to feed in an x value as an input and get out a y value as an output. In order to make calculations more precise than simply looking at the graph that we see here and kind of tracing our finger along the lines, there are functions that we can use to calculate values. We'll need the slope, which is the rate of change, and the intercept function to make these sorts of calculations that allow us to predict the y value, the second column from the first column, which are x values, and to predict uh, potentially predict x values if we even happen to know the y value. The slope function is uh, rather easily enough the slope. Now the, the slope and the intercept function both operate in a slightly different way than those who may be used to working with xy coordinates in algebra class. The slope function, one first selects the y values here. The y values go first. The second column is selected first. That's the order. And you can see right above my text box, it says slope, data y, data x. And so I'll then press comma, and now I can go ahead and select the x data. So you'll notice I went, if you will, in some sense backwards from right to left. I put in the y column first, and then the x values go second. The x values have a red tint, the numbers below are colored red. Be careful with the slope and intercept function. The order they go in is y comma x, which is the reverse order of uh, many of the other ways in which we use x and y in algebra class, where we talk about x, y coordinates, x, y scatter graphs. The slope function takes the data in the order y comma x. And if I press the uh, checkbox, I get the, the slope is indeed 
uh, 2.76 we can see that there 2.768 and some more decimals you could round that off if you wanted to that's a format option I'll leave it alone for right now what that slope is telling us is that physically that marble was moving at 2.77 feet per second every second it was covering 2.77 feet there is a y-intercept for this data the y-intercept function is just intercept there's no y used we just type intercept intercept there's the function and this function also works in that same order the y data then the x data here and the colors help me see that i'm doing this correctly notice i'm only selecting the data not the labels and so the intercept is 3.1 feet which uh, makes sense if you've watched the earlier videos for section 4.1 uh, in that section, the timing was started at three feet. Uh, I, the timer, time zero was three feet. You'll notice this isn't exactly three feet. There are, of course, errors in timing and hand timing. And so uh, the best fit line doesn't go exactly through three. The uh, best fit line actually goes through about 3.12 feet. But that, that's fine. So that's my slope and intercept. Slope is a rate of change, intercept is a starting value, and we have this y equals mx plus b format, if you're familiar with algebra notation, that lets us figure out from an x a y. Put another way, if the distance values are the output, then you can use the time as the input. The distance is equal to the slope times the time plus the y-intercept. Let me show you what I mean. Earlier I spoke about what happens at 1.5 seconds. We can actually now calculate that. All formulas start with an equal, so I'm going to start with an equal sign. I'm going to go ahead and type in the slope by tapping on B10. So I'm actually not going to type the slope at all. This is the beauty of spreadsheets. I can let that B10 refer to that value up in B10. So I take B10 and then times, the asterisk is a time sign on com on computers has been for many years the input well that I said I want to know how far I've gone after 1.5 seconds and don't forget I now have to add the y-intercept value and again I can just tap in B11 and the colors match and that reminds me of what I'm doing and I press the check sign and I should get out something around seven and a half and I do I get out uh, 7.27 727 uh, kind of like the Boeing jet when I was younger the uh, 7.27 tells me that at 1.5 seconds, the marble is at 7.27 feet along that tape measure that was seen in an earlier video. So given a time, I can calculate a distance. It's also the case that if there's a distance, I can calculate the time. If there's a question about when did the marble reach, say, uh, uh, 11, uh, me 11 feet, I can figure that out. The time will be simply equal to the formula there that you see just above A23 and A22. There is one detail to pay attention to here, and that is you must use parentheses to calculate this. Those of you who've had some algebra can work out, all I've done is solved the y equals mx plus b formula for x. And so the first operation is y minus b, and then that quantity has to be divided by the slope. That's what's going on here. But if you haven't had algebra, don't worry about it. The distance minus the intercept. I said I want to know what happens at 11 feet, so I take the 11 foot distance. I subtract now the y-intercept. In this formula, I always subtract the y-intercept. Whether the y-intercept is positive or negative doesn't really matter to me. The formula will take care of that. I then divide by the slope, and uh, that will then give me about 2.84 seconds, 2.85 seconds. And I can actually go look at the graph and see if that looks reasonable. I'll shrink it down here. But uh, I can see 11 comes across and I come down. And yeah, that, that, that looks like that may happen someplace around 2.8. The formula makes it much easier to get a measurement, or a result, than eyeballing the graph does. And so this is a, a more precise measure, but the actual precision will depend on just how good the linear relationship is. 
In this particular case, we have a good strong linear relationship. The data flows through the uh, the uh, data and the line are well aligned. They're, most of the data points are on the line. So we have a, a good high correlation. Well, we'll look at that in, in a future section, just how good a fit a line is to the data we're dealing with. But this is an introduction both to the slope and intercept function. Remember, you do the y values and then the x values. It's also an illustration of how we can then use the slope and the intercept to predict particular outcomes. Given a time, we can predict a distance. Given a distance, we can predict a time. And while this example is that for a marble rolling on the floor, this basic principle can be applied to any linear relationship between two variables, these same functions. Tables can be quite large. There may be many data points. And we'll see some cases where data may not be as close to the line, but we can still find that there's a relationship between the variables. So we've introduced slope and intercept and how to use those to make calculations. One caution, one should be very careful about making predictions out beyond the end of the data. That is, past 4.33 seconds, in some sense, we don't know what happens to the marble. If it continues at the same speed, then we can predict where it will be. But in reality, that marble ran into a towel on the floor, and it didn't continue any farther. The same is true for distances. I could use this formula to calculate how long it would take the marble to go 5,280 feet a mile. But the marble is never going to roll a mile, not in the real world, and so that prediction would be meaningless. It's always uh, ill-advised to go beyond either the maximum of the x values or below the minimum of the y values. A, the result is not going to be reliable unless there's something you know about the system that assures you that it continues to be linear below the minimum or above the maximum. But that's really beyond the scope of the course. That's knowing something about your data. But this is an area where uh, people sometimes make errors. They sometimes take a what looks like a linear relationship and then extend beyond the last x value, extrapolate, and that can lead to uh, predictions that simply aren't accurate, aren't reliable, uh, will will not necessarily come to pass. Uh, there's two problems. It may not be linear, uh, and in fact, the second problem really is it could be something like part of an exponential, and so your value will not only be off, but rather misleading. Well, that wraps up a brief introduction to how to make the calculations here in section 4.2.